capture efficiency benefits independent of the standard. So it is really you know, jumping on a bandwagon that helps to increase, to enhance competitiveness. I think that, that is um, a major point. And I thought that also you, the survey that um, you have done in Kenya was very revealing in terms of you know, providing um, higher <coughs> premiums and providing better market access in uh, having a better understanding um, of uh, the, the, the chemicals um, being used. So I think we are hearing here that uh, there are, you know, if, that, that there really is it's a business proposition that companies and hence also trade support institutions that advise companies have to um, understand and then make an informed decision of um, what, makes, what makes sense. Um, now, coming to the development impact, um, I'm impressed, I am impressed by the size of the flea. Um, you know, I think uh, in terms uh, of uh, the <coughs> uh, um, achievement of having, of involving some 75 million producers um, in some 60 countries of empowering consumers also in, in 25 countries uh, and of uh, I understand correctly, tripling your sales in five years to 3.3 um, billion US dollars is not a small feat. And <clears throat> I think um, uh, on, on a broader perspective, Paula, you were uh, uh, talking about the achievements of BRAC. Again, you have very, very impressive numbers. So I think it's very clear that we are no longer, also from a developmental perspective, talking about a marginal phenomenon. It is a real avenue for actually for what ITC has as its major motto, export impact for good. And it's always this exports are difficult, impact certainly is true, but probably the biggest challenge is for good. And I think we are hearing here examples of how <coughs> uh, th this is happening. Um, I think that um, for the uh, uh, trade support institutions and the Government, I think one very important lesson I'm hearing from all of you is to ensure that there are, there is, there are uh, the PPPs, the private-public partnerships, that there's multi-stakeholder approach, um, and that uh, that's the the only way of of, of enhancing. Um, and I'm, uh, I found very interesting to see that institutions like Global Gap is now. Um, in a way, uh, decentralizing this to some 40 countries where you do similar initiatives uh, at, at, the, uh, at, at the national level. Um, before I come to the uh, implications that I see uh, for an institution like ITC, let me uh, just pick up a few more quotes that I found uh, particularly um, revealing. Um, Rob, I thought the point of adding to Pakalami's two Vs, the, from volume to value, in, uh, adding the third uh, V, which is a value with an S, I think is a very important, a very important um, uh, addition. And I think that's something that, um, in particular, also in our uh, discussion on aid for trade, to go to aid to trade, is, is an important point. Um, Paula, I, I thought your point you were making that ethical, the ethical approach is not a marketing tool but part of their lifeblood. I think that's the way you, you create uh, a credibility and then achieve uh, what, what um, you have achieved in terms of growth, annual growth of 40%, where then the crisis comes in quite handy for a year of rest. Um, and then um, I thought that uh, Nigel, you started um, by saying, I think it's a key point, uh, sustainability is not a niche market, but it's really mainstream. And uh, I think uh, it's here where the two different uh, segments, you know, merge more, or at least come closer and, and, and benefit um, each other. Now, uh, what, are, what are the implications from, uh, for an institution uh, like, uh, like ITC? Um, well, a, a first point that I'm hearing is that uh, what is really essential from the producer perspective is to understand the details. How does it work? How can a particular standard 
uh, help me to, to do my business better. And I think here is a need for having better case studies, better examples, um, more transparency, understanding um, what is the actual market access I would be getting by investing into certification and what is the, um, w what is the best uh, uh, standard that uh, would, uh, uh, would be available for me. And I think that's something that's very much in line with ITC's current work our Trade for Sustainable Development project, which some of you may have heard about two years ago, which we presented in Montreux, where we are trying to provide better transparency on standards, where we're uh, providing a platform where, in particular, also the compatibility of different standards um, and what they consist of and what are the actual benefits are documented. And we are looking forward very much to complete ITC's offer of market analysis tools uh, next year with a standards map. We have a trade map, a market access map, and another, uh, a number of other maps, but we are very happy to develop this. Um, so that's one important point. I think the second um, point is to really understand our sector development programs, um, how we can factor in uh, standards uh, in the best manner. And I think here, I am very glad to see that Unlike the situation uh, 25 years ago when I joined the ITC, when there was a big distance, a big distance between kind of a third world and fair trade movements and a conventional trade. I see now that there are a number of initiatives being, uh, <coughs> uh, being undertaken, understand that our program in enterprise competitiveness is working with flow and that we are really moving from a kind of what, what we heard from Mr. Bo, um, first contact, friendship, partnership, we are moving there to, the, to this level of really engaging um, in a partnership. Um, then, finally, uh, I think the uh, idea of defining a living wage, I think, is a very interesting uh, concept. Um, would uh, ITC be in a position to lift this alone, maybe, maybe not, um, but I think it's certainly something where the principal idea is, is, is very important and where um, it's clear that the independence and um, acceptability of an international organization or of an, a neutral body would be very helpful and it's something where, again, I would very much hope that the family of international organizations uh, can move forward. So um, I think we are already slightly over time. So with this, let me thank you from my side once more very much and pass the last word to our moderator. Th thank you for that excellent summary and I've been given the speak for 30 seconds. So I'd like to thank you all and thank our excellent panelists. I want to just offer one alternative We've talked a lot about economics, a lot of things about demand from the consumer, purchasing by, uh, by the producers and so forth. I do think there is something here also about the fundamental business leaders themselves. A lot of people do ethical business, produce ethical products without necessarily seeing a market because that's fundamentally what they want to do. And I think there is a market out there as well. And often to really turn, this, turn the corner on this it's potentially about working with those leaders and having a, a discussion around the ethics of what they do that can really make things work. Uh, folks, we're in a Malthusian world. Sustainable business models are not an alternative. It is actually the only option going forward. So thank you again for attending this session, and I hope you found it useful. I think in terms of housekeeping, we have coffee and, and tea, and uh, I think we will re resume right here in the two, yes, the two groups um, at, at 3.15. Thank you. <laughs>